Welcome back. We are here in Cologne for the last Ultra Series Regional Championships uh, of the format uh, before we move into the new game. So we've got through a really long day of Swiss yesterday, eight full rounds, uh, one of the longest regionals we've ever had with, uh, I've said it once, I'll say it again, one of the biggest regionals that we've ever had. Um, so we're here day two, uh, we're in top 16 um, and uh, we've got some Really great matches going to be shown today. We've got some matches in the top 16, uh, following on to top eight, top four, and eventually uh, that all-important finals that all of these players are rooting to get to today. So, um, Romy, take us away with some of the brackets that we've got to see. Yeah, so um, the match that's actually going to be on stream is uh, Arash Omari and Flavio Del Pio. We have actually both seen them on stream mm. already. They both are amazing players, so I think we're going to get some really good plays here. Um, we also have Hyperlite Bernard versus Leonardo Bonanomi. We yep. have Mike Michele Cavelli and Simon Wojdad. Dennis Cumbria and Fefsi Uskan. We have Christian Cansares against Fernando Vincenti. Then we have Nils Dunlop against Andrea Cas Cassinese, David Carrer, Eric Rios, and then we also have Roberto Parente who's playing Alex Gomez. Yeah, so quite a few players that we featured uh, yesterday during the day. Uh, we saw Christian in, in uh, the last round playing off against uh, Fabian, wasn't it? Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, and a really close game there, so uh, he was he was running quite an interesting team. Uh, a lot of Pokemon that we haven't seen too much. Uh, that Bisharp and Naganadel that uh, that he decided to bring to this tournament and has has taken such good effect for him. He's he's managed to do so well with them. Uh, but also we've got players that we didn't see, uh, people like Alex Gomez and Eric Rios that we saw in the top eight of the World Championships this year. Um, so just a, a fantastic bracket all the way across um, and it's going to be really exciting to to see what these players are bringing that we haven't seen uh, yet and hopefully we see a little bit later on today. Yes, yeah, also we're seeing a lot of Italians again just as like in, <laughs> yeah. in earlier formats they, they can be very dominant on these regional kind of levels. Yeah completely and I think uh, we were having a look at it earlier and I think there's an Italian in every stage of the bracket at the moment in top 16 so we could have a all Italian top eight here. Yeah, so the uh, players that actually Arash we already saw had also a little bit of a more interesting team because he was actually running the Don Wings Necrozma, which we haven't really seen that much from in this format, but we've actually saw it twice on the stream. Yeah, exactly, and it did uh, did some interesting things um, in the game versus Arash. We didn't really get to see it used to its fullest potential. Uh, managed to. Uh, get it on the field, uh, get that ultra burst going, uh, and then it uh, went back to a rash. So um, going to be good to see if maybe we see a little bit more of that today um, against Flavio's team, which we saw way back in round one. So, you know, obviously we saw him uh, win his first game uh, here on stream and had a good, uh, good amount of insight from him uh, in the interview afterwards. But uh, you know, seven rounds have gone. Uh, he's uh, managed to make his way all the way back here to day two. Um, and uh, we're going to see a little bit more of him. Uh, we saw some really good positional play um, that he uh, managed to, you know, keep on top of his opponent. So maybe we'll see more of that. Yeah, because the team is running, um, seems kind of familiar like what he was running in the I IUC, which he actually won with. Mm. So maybe this team is just so good he's going to win something again. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, and uh, that's clearly clearly something that Flavio decided uh, was was a good philosophy going into uh, into this uh, last event of the season. Yes, and I also think, you know, running a team that, you know, you're familiar with, um, you've been running for quite a long time and it's been so incredibly successful. Um, is there anything like you can tell specifically about a team that we've already saw on stream that you think was really interesting? Well, we saw that Xerneas uh, take attacks really well um, in in the game that he played back in round one. Um, you know, you don't see too much of these Xerneas that are really uh, trained to take so many attacks so well and it just makes sure that it can stay on the field. It does geomancy. We know exactly how that works. Uh, we've seen it so many times before. And, and actually, you know, uh, the way that these players decide to um, train their Pokemon, train their Xerneas to uh, 
maybe be a little bit bulkier, take that, uh, take those hits, uh, maybe get that one more attack off. Um, you know, is, is really great to see. So I think hopefully we'll see a little bit more of that and uh, something that Arash will need to uh, find a way to play around. Uh, as we are showing now the bracket uh, in top 16, so Romy, what you uh, went through just a moment ago, um, we've got, uh, as we said, so many Italians here. Yes, yeah, so you can see that uh, we have the three matches, just an Italian against an Italian. And all of these players, we could just have a completely top eight with Italians if they do well here. Yeah, completely. Uh, but we have got a couple of other regions. We've got a couple of the uh, Spanish, Alex Gomez, Eric yeah. Rios that we mentioned earlier. Uh, we've got Niels Dunlop from uh, Sweden, I believe, yes. um, making another appearance in the top eight. And we've seen him several tournaments through the years. Um, London, uh, EUIC, uh, way back in 2017 made a top, uh, top eight appearance. And, uh, you know, when you go back to all those, uh, all those years ago and they're still making waves here in these tournaments, uh, really great to see. Yes, because now here we're in Germany. Sadly, there's, I only see one German here in this bracket. <laughs> yeah. So maybe he can actually win it out here for Germany. But um, is there anything... Oh, we're actually just going right into the game. Going right into the game, so here we go. Uh, we've got uh, Flavio on your left and Arash on your right. Uh, they're going to be connecting up now, and uh, we're going to go straight into team preview. Yeah, so these players have both shown that um, they can play very well. Both these players won their stream match yesterday. Mm -hmm. So here, just going into uh, team preview on uh, Flavio's side, we have Cernius, the Rayquaza, Amungus, Incineroar, the Nihiligo, and the Tapu Fini. And on Arash's side, we have the Amungus, the Cernius, the Metagross, the Crobat, the Incineroar, and the Dawnwing Snake Crossman. Yeah, so, you know, a, a real uh, restricted pairing matchup that we don't see too too often. Uh, Xerneas Dawnwings um, from Arash's side of the field. Uh, not quite sure how that usually pairs up against uh, Xerneas and Rayquaza on Flavio's side of the field. Uh, certainly going to be uh, that Dawnwings Necrozma. If it decides to Ultra Burst, it's going to put a lot of pressure on both that Xerneas and that Rayquaza, usually outspeeding um, both of those Pokemon. And Light That Burns the Sky is something that, you know, you don't like to ignore uh, too often. So, you know, we've got uh, Flavio, he's got the ability to redirect, he's got the ability to fake out um, in, and make sure that Xerneas, uh, with, all that, uh, with all that bulk that we were talking about earlier, um, you know, make sure that gets his Geomancy up, puts the pressure back on Arash's side of the field and, um, you know, both of these players are going to have to really uh, think about how they work around uh, the Pokemon that their their opponent has. So lead-wise, what would you like to see? Well, uh, I think we'll see a Xerneas. <laughs> uh, I think that's what we're going to see. Um, but as to whether that Xerneas is going to be uh, led with anything else, uh, it's anyone's guess. These players uh, know each other very well. They're from the same region. Uh, they'll know how each other play the game. So we might see something Maybe a little bit different, maybe a, a little bit more exciting coming out uh, in this game one uh, because, you know, not the first time these players have been against each other. No, yeah, that's what you have sometimes also difficult playing against friends just because you know them so well, you know their playstyle so well, but they also know it about you. And we do actually see on Flavio's side, see that Cerny is coming out together with Rayquaza. And Arash is leading that uh, Crowbar together with the new the Dawn Wings Necrozma. Yeah, so uh, three restricted Pokemon <laughs> on the field. Uh, if there was ever a way to put offensive pressure on the uh, on the field, Flavio's found it. He's picked his restricted Pokemon and brought them out straight away. Um, so a rush leading with that Crobat. A uh, good call from him. He's managed to. He's got something on the field that's really going to uh, put pressure on that Xerneas, stop it from setting up potentially. Uh, maybe uh, launching out a tailwind of its own, get some speed control on his side of the field for the next few turns, and make sure that uh, his Dawnwings Necrozma can maybe uh, dish out those big attacks. Light that burns the sky could come out uh, very quickly here in this game. Um, so Flavio's got to be a little bit aware of that. Maybe he decides to do a little bit of pivoting, change his position, maybe pressure that Crobat a little bit more so his Xerneas can start setting up. 
Yeah, because uh, Crowbar is also known to run something like Taunt, meaning that Flavio is not really that free to just go for a Geomancy. Unless, of course, he just thinks that the Rush might go for something like Tailwind. Mm. Might be a perfect opportunity to set up, as we see Rayquaza going for its Mega. We're seeing the Delta Stream joining the field and the new wing Taunt Wings Necrozma going for that Ultra Burst. Increasing its speed, head, speed stats by a lot, meaning it's probably now the fastest thing on the field. As the Crobot just goes for Tailwind, making sure that Arash's team is going to be the fastest thing on the field here. For a while, as Photon Geyser comes out from the Ultrana Cosma, doing just under half on that turn, turn is really showing how bulky that is. As the Mega Rayquaza goes for a big Dragon Ascent into that Crobat here. Ooh. Oof. Which is just hanging on there. Definitely not something that Flavio wanted to see. And the Cerny is going for a Geomancy here. Just Flavio taking the chance to set up while he still can. Yeah, that, I mean, brilliant uh, play on both sides there. Uh, you've got Arash, we talked about how uh, he was pressuring the, the Geomancy setup with uh, Xerneas, but, you know, leading that pressure, leading that Rayquaza uh, means that he's been able to put a lot of damage on that Crobat and put it into range of an extreme speed uh, next turn. Uh, Arash, make sure he's got the Tailwind, make sure that Geomancy uh, is at least matched and Light That Burns the Sky can definitely come out here. So Arash may be needing to do a little bit of pivoting um, over this next turn to make sure that while he has the Tailwind up, that Xerneas is put under pressure. Yeah, because you know, a Geomancy uh, Xerneas can, if it just uh, goes for something like Dazzling Gleam, it can just wreck through an entire team really fast. Yeah, and uh, you know, Ultra Necrozma, uh, it's not exactly gonna like to take either a Dazzling Gleam or a, a Moonblast from uh, from the Xerneas. So we see uh, Rayquaza, as we said, just go for that, straight for that extreme speed into the Crobat. Yeah, definitely a safe play, making sure that, you know, it's at such low HP and we do see that Z-move coming out, that light that burns the sky. So you think it's gonna go into the Turnius? I think it would be. Uh, I think it would be a, a difficult decision to not uh, go into that Xerneas. Uh, we saw that Photon Geyser did about 40%, roughly. Uh, Light that burns the sky is uh, much more powerful. Uh, but a rush. Uh, sorry, Flavio does have the Geomancy, so uh, maybe not gonna pick up the KO. Uh, maybe do about the same. Uh, put the Xerneas into range for another attack, but actually. We do see it go into the Rayquaza, so uh, Arash deciding that he wants to remove some of that pressure um, on uh, Flavio's side of the field, maybe uh, dispatch that Rayquaza after it's uh, dropped its defenses from Dragon Ascent, but not quite picking up the KO there. No, as soon as goes for a big dazzling gleam there, even though it is an option to pick up the KO on Arash's um, New Dawn ne Necrozma, so Maybe um, Arash was worried that Cernius would go for something like a Protect and he would just waste his C-move? Well, that, that's certainly uh, a consideration for him. Uh, Arash does have that Metagross in the back, so maybe that's going to be coming in here. Uh, maybe he decided that Metagross was the one to deal with Xerneas, uh, not that uh, Dawnwing's Necrozma, or Ultra Necrozma as it turned into in turn one. Yes. Um, so, you know, probably, uh, probably the better play there from Arash, and now with that uh, Metagross having the ability to uh, Mega Evolve and use that Iron Head that we saw uh, yesterday um, in uh, Arash's stream game. Uh, going to be doing a lot of damage to that Xerneas, is going to be piling on the pressure there. But uh, Flavio's taken an early 4-2 lead. Uh, he's managed to uh, get himself in a position where maybe he can just wait this out, bring out his other two Pokemon and, uh, you know, uh, maybe that's the Incineroar, maybe that's the Amoongus and just... Uh, support his Xerneas and make sure it stays uh, stays on the field and putting that pressure on. Uh, we know that Xerneas with a Geomancy uh, can eventually uh, run through just about anything in the field that's not named Shedinja um, <laughs> and uh, there's no Shedinja on the field. No, so the Flavio just really um, having very good lead here with that Rayquaza, with that Xerneas just going for the Geomancy and he's now kind of up with uh, two Pokemon as Xerneas Goes for the protect this time. Doesn't want to hit being hit by anything that comes out from that Metagross. And uh, Arash decides to also set up his Geomancy, knowing, okay, I'm down to my last two Pokemon. 
I need to do something to make sure that, that I can take out the, the whole of Flavio's team. Yeah, so uh, rightly so, uh, Arash needing to, um, you know, get some uh, get some pressure of his own on the field uh, alongside that Mega Metagross. Uh, uh, we saw Meta Mega Metagross doing so much work in the last few games, uh, but it can't do everything, uh, I'm afraid. And uh, you know, uh, Flavio deciding to finish off that turn with uh, an Earth Power, doing just over 50% to that Metagross. Yeah, so there's definitely something a Russian has to worry about because if Rayquaza is able to go for another Earth, er, Earth power, it's just going to leave the field and a Russian will be down to only Zornias. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, we, we're not sure quite what Flavio has in the back, but there's one turn of Tailwind left. Uh, Arash has to take this opportunity. The Xerneas is just protected. Uh, the Rayquaza can't protect uh, based on that... Uh, uh, damage from light that burns the sky, you'd expect anything other than Assault Vest to, to be able to survive that attack. Um, so, you know, Arash actually has got a real amount of pressure on the board here. Uh, Flavio didn't take the opportunity to damage Xerneas, so he's still got uh, full HP as we see the double protect come out from Flavio's uh, Xerneas. Yeah, and the um, Mega Rayquaza just going for an extreme speed into that uh, matter grows as the Xerneas go for a Dazzling Gleam. But um, Rayquaza just wants to get a little bit more damage off since it will be outspit by the Xerneas in Tailwind. So definitely a smart play just to get a little bit of extra damage on it as we see it go into the double protect from that Xerneas. Yeah, so uh, Flavio I think probably needed that. <laughs> um, you know, you never want to be uh, down too restricted uh, and have to face a Geomancy Xerneas, uh, especially if the uh, Incineroar and uh, if the last Pokemon that we see on Flavio's uh, side of the field ends up being something like that Amoongus, uh, not too much offensive pressure going on there, um, probably not going to be able to whittle down the Xerneas and uh, you know take the KO in the late game. So yeah, good play from Flavio, making sure he's played to his outs there. Uh, we've seen it uh, many times before. You know, you get into that position and you just have to click the button and hope that it works. And uh, this time it did. Uh, maybe next time it won't, but. Uh, you know, we are where we are, and uh, that Xerneas on um, Flavio's side of the field, now that that Tailwind is uh, expired, uh, will be able to really pressure that Metagross uh, going into the next turns. Yes, Incineroar going for that fake out into the Xerneas, doesn't want to take any attack from that Geomancy. As Bullet Punch is coming out from the uh, meta Metagross, and the Momblast going from the Xerneas into Metagross, it is enough to pick up the KO there. So Metagross also leaving the field. Arash now down to only a Xerneas. Yeah, and we're going to see how the Xerneas uh, match up speed-wise. Uh, we know from previous games that Flavio Xerneas a little bit slower, a little bit bulkier, uh, opting for uh, being able to take those attacks. But, you know, as much bulk that you have in the world, when you're at low HP, it doesn't matter anymore. You're just slower. Uh, so maybe a good position here for Arash as he goes, f uh, looks like Flavio He's goes for the Moonblast anyway. Yeah, so Flavio is either maybe a speed high or he is actually faster than Arash's uh, Cernius. But Arash firing back with a dazzling gleam. Flavio's Cernius is going to go down as the Incineroar goes for a U-turn, just making sure it can reposition himself. Yeah, so uh, going to see what the last Pokemon on Flavio's side of the field here. Uh, a real insight into what Arash may be running on his own Xerneas, uh, maybe opting for a similar kind of uh, slow, bulky uh, build. Um, and actually, the Nihiligo comes out. Yeah, I think that's definitely a good matchup against that uh, Xerneas. Yeah, so we were saying, you know, if the, uh, if the Amoongus is in the back, then... Uh, probably not going to be the best matchup, not going to do some damage, but Nihiligo, no stranger to doing damage in uh, against Xerneas with a uh, powerful sludge bomb. We did see it launch a clear smog into, Xerne uh, into another Xerneas um, way back in round one. Uh, so lots of options there for Flavio to just uh, finish off this game, maybe deciding to go for a clear smog just in case, drop the boost, make sure that that Nihiligo outspeeds the Xerneas. Uh, there's no risk of any uh, critical hits or anything else happening. Um, so, but we actually just see Arash uh, forfeit that game. Yeah, Arash realizing that there just wasn't anything he could do against that Nihiligo anymore. So now going into game two, how do you think Arash can kind of adjust to this? Well, it, it, Flavio uh, led with his restricteds. 
Right, so he, he put the pressure on uh, right at the start, made sure that Crobat, which was one of Arashi's main ways to deal with Xerneas, uh, was really pressured uh, to right, from the, right from the start of the game. Uh, the way that uh, Flavio had trained his Xerneas, he was able to take that Photon Geyser, probably would have been able to take that light that burns the sky. Um, so, you know, uh, Arashi has got to find a little bit more of a proactive approach to how he uh, leads in this game, how he stops Flavio from uh, setting up that uh, geomancy and putting on so much pressure. Uh, we saw Pado didn't actually bring uh, the Amoongus uh, in that game, so uh, maybe something that Arash wants to capitalize on uh, could leave that Ultra Necrozma at home, maybe. Uh, doesn't need it to deal with the uh, Amoongus. Uh, even though it does a lot of damage and, and uh, does a lot of work, maybe he could bring his own Amoongus to uh, make sure he could redirect all of those attacks away from his Xerneas and really capitalize on that going into this game. Yeah, so uh, on Panda's side, we do see a Tapu Fini maybe stopping Sport from coming out, but he didn't decide to bring it in game one. So do you think he will just um, lead for us, for instance, again with Sojourney's Rayquaza, just because of the amount of pressure that it put on against Arash? I wouldn't be surprised to see Flavio mix things up slightly. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he if he brought that uh, Nihiligo in um, turn one this time, just to put a bit of pressure on to... Um, the Crobat, he's got to find a way to keep that Crobat under control. Um, so, you know, Flavio's going to have to lead something like that Nihiligo, something like that Rayquaza, uh, maybe even the Amoongus on his own side of the field if he thinks that Arash isn't running that taunt um, on Crobat and just uh, go straight for a Spore turn one. Um, but a little bit of a risky play, a uh, little bit of a risky strategy. So let's see as we go into uh, game two uh, what these players decide to lead. Yeah, so, you know, <coughs> top 60 might not really be the place to uh, play very risky, even though <laughs> Flavio is one game up. You never know what's going to happen, and maybe just going for a little bit of the safer plays is the best way to go if you want to continue going to top 8. Mm. But sometimes playing it a little bit more risky can also pay off. But Arash uh, does decide to lead with the same thing, leading that uh, Dawn Wings, Necrozma and Necrobat. Uh, Flavio not changing it up as well, leading Xerneas and Rayquaza. Yeah, so uh, we, we had uh, a game uh, in the stream yesterday where we had both players leading the same thing uh, every single game, and maybe that's what we're going to be seeing here. Uh, but what happened in those games was very different things. Uh, all of these decisions that these players make um, from turn one onwards make such a difference to, the, to the, uh, how the game plays out and the end of... Uh, end of the game and what those positions end up looking like uh, so you know maybe we see exactly the same turn one maybe we see something different but all we can say is it's not going to look exactly the same as uh, game one even though these leads are exactly the same yeah so maybe um, Crobat opting to go for something like Taunt if it runs like just to stop the journey is from setting up immediately turn one and maybe just hoping that he can get up Tailwind later but Flavio thought also had a really it felt like a really good way to deal with the tailwind and it didn't seem to really bother him that much. No, certainly not. I mean, he managed to take quite an early advantage um, and then just run that through to the end. As the Mega Ashire Quasa is going for that Mega, bringing up the Delta streams, which is going to be there until it leaves the field. And this time, the Crobat not wanting the journey is to set up, going for a taunt. I think definitely a smart play, seeing as this might have been uh, something he was just too worried about happening again. The Mega Rayquaza going for the Dragon Ascent, as we saw in game one, not enough to pick up the KO, but it does do quite a lot of damage as Photon Geyser comes out again from that uh, new Dawn, Dawn Wings Necrozma, doing just a, just a little bit less damage as we saw in game one. Certainly, uh, this time, not going for that <laughs> Geomancy. Flavio being really happy, also getting a crit with a Moonblast on the Dawn Wings and Crowsma. Yeah, so lots of interesting things happen here and it's already a completely different game. <laughs> uh, you saw the players laughing there. Uh, I think it looked like Arash uh, forgot to hit that uh, Ultra Burst button. Um, <laughs> didn't Ultra Burst, got that uh, Photon Geyser off onto Flavio Xerneas, but actually worked out really well because Flavio just going for a Moonblast this time. Um, Taunt coming out, as you said, uh, from the Crobat, stopping that Xerneas 
uh, really uh, setting up and, and running over uh, Arashi's team uh, like it did and put a lot of pressure on in game one. So really good adjustments here coming into game two, I think from both players, uh, just deciding uh, to play it a little bit differently, a little bit more conservatively, um, but looks like Flavio on the front foot here. Yeah, so Arash wants to actually protect his uh, Acrobat, switch it out. We are, are going to see that Metagross switching in, and this time there is the Ultra Necrozma. <laughs> so Arash this time maybe not forgetting to uh, press that button as it just goes for a Protect, wanting to make sure that it doesn't take any attack from either that Me Mega Rayquaza or that Cernius. But Mega Rayquaza just goes for an extreme speed into that Crowbat, as we saw in Game 1, that was then enough to pick up the Crowbat. But Arash deciding he just maybe needs it in, in, in the end game. So, and Metagross is not really going to take that much from an extreme speed. And the journeys went for Dazzling Gleam. Yeah, so uh, a couple of little bits of setup here. So, Arash uh, taking out that Crobat, not going to sacrifice it this game so early on. Uh, bringing in that Metagross to resist both attacks that Rayquaza and Xerneas on Flavio's side of the field are going to be dishing out. Um, He's, he's put himself in a position, we know that Rayquaza doesn't, isn't able to protect, uh, so you know he's, he's managed to Ultra Burst, uh, finally his uh, Dawnwing's Necrozma, uh, get out threaten that light that burns the sky, uh, potentially on that uh, Rayquaza, we saw it do loads of damage in game one, and probably bringing the Metagross in just to finish off with maybe something like an Iron Head, um, and put pressure on that particular slot on Flavio's side of the field. Yeah, so the Mega Metagross now going for that Mega Evolution, getting that tough, tough class does mean that if Flavio did decide to bring his Incineroar, he can intimidate it this time, as we see that light that burns the sky coming out. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we'll see if he actually decided to uh, bring, in, bring it into that Rayquaza again. Uh, we saw uh, last game uh, Flavio did decide to bring his Incineroar, not an uncommon thing I know, but really important when you look at Iron Head and Light That Burns the Sky, uh, Incineroar can take those all day, every day. Um, so, you know, a little bit of a risk. Uh, Flavio could reposition. Uh, he's not got any boost with the Xerneas, or with, and he's got some drops with the Rayquaza. Um, so, you know, options there for him to reposition, uh, take all of those uh, problems away. Uh, but actually, we see him going into the Rayquaza, just like last game, uh, gonna do loads of damage here. Yeah, with a mega meta, meta gross on the field, maybe just being a little Oof. bit more worried. But Rayquaza again, just hanging on with a little bit of, of health as it goes for an earth power into that meta gross. Ooh! Oof. Oh and my god! And with that one HP as it fires back a big Iron Head, which is enough to pick up the KO on that Flavio side. You can see the look of relief on Arash's face there as that Metagross <laughs> survived the attack. I don't think he expected it to the Rayquaza <laughs> to go first, uh, expecting that Iron Head to come out. And maybe he loses the Metagross in exchange for the Xerneas, but hey, you take that trade every day. Uh, Metagross would have done its job and now it has, but hey, it's still on the field. It's still doing what it does. Um, so really great turn there for Arash. Uh, unfortunate there for Flavio, uh, didn't to take advantage of that potential switch into Incineroar there and uh, got punished for it. Uh, he was, he is a game up. He can make those reads. He can take those risks. Uh, and if it came off for him, uh, probably would have been in a really good position to uh, finish off the game and put Arash right back on the back foot um, and sweep up this game. But Arash making such a good call there. Um, must have trained his Pokemon perfectly, uh, had a little pep talk with them this morning, said, you know what, if an Earth Power comes out, Metagross, from a Rayquaza, you're going to survive it, and that's exactly what happened. Exactly. I'm sure Arash gave him some extra berries to enjoy, <laughs> and I'm sure he's going to give him some extra once this battle is over. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, Arash wanting to protect his Metagross, even if it is against a little bit of health, but now we see the Crobat switching in. As we saw in the beginning, Ultra, Ma Ultra Necrozma just Wanting to protect, making sure that next turn is still around when it is next to that Crobat. And Rayquaza going for that extreme speed, meaning Crobat is just going to leave the field here. But meaning that he does now have a free switch into either his Metagross or his last Pokemon. Yeah, so uh, Arash, um, he, you know, he had a really great last turn, but actually... You know, when you when you take a step back and look at where his position is overall, he had that Crobat in the back on 
uh, you know, really low HP. He had his Metagross on really low HP. Uh, that Necrozma not sitting too pretty either, um, and only got his Xerneas that's actually uh, got some health left. Uh, so, you know, if Flavio does have that Nihiligo in the back, he's going to have to work really hard to make sure that that uh, Ultra Necrozma is there, ready to pressure the uh, Nihiligo, making sure that, you know, even if uh, Arash does get to this end game with the Xerneas, he's not going to have be in a position that he was last game where that Nihiligo was just able to clear things out for, for Flavio. Yeah, so Flavio did decide to bring the Nihiligo uh, last game, which I think was really important in the end. So I personally think he will have probably brought it again because Xerneas can, I think, be quite a big problem for anyone. And uh, having something ni like Nihiligo in the back so Oof. you can take it out. And again, Nag Arashis has perfectly trained his Pokemon because it's again able to live in extreme speed and fire back a Photon Geyser, which is enough to pick up the KO on Omega Rayquaza on Flavio's side. Yeah, and we've actually, um, I did make a small mistake there. We do actually have the Metacross in the back for Arash. Yeah. So two Pokemon there to be able to deal with this Nihiligo. Uh, going to be uh, Arash going for the Geomancy, getting his board position set up. But if that uh, Incineroar goes for a U-turn maybe on that Ultra Necrozma, uh, could pick up the KO there, uh, reposition with some fake out, exactly what we see coming out there. Exactly, yes. So and the, the U-turn is now enough to uh, take Ultra ne Necrozma off the field, meaning that if Nihiligo is in the back, it's going to have a little bit of an easier time. So also now um, Flavio can bring us Incineroar again, use fake out again, um, and also uh, possibly um, intimidate the uh, Metagross on uh, Arash's side. Yeah, so I think we're going to see something quite interesting here. Um, trying to rack my brain thinking, how does Flavio uh, remove that Metagross on the field when, you know, okay, he's got fake out in play, um, and uh, that's great, but both of these Pokemon, uh, Xerneas and Metagross on Arash's side of the field, uh, always carry Protect. Um, so, you know, how does that, uh, how does he manage to, um, you know, do that last little bit of damage that he wasn't able to do with the Earth Power? And actually, uh, Flavio has the opportunity here to uh, fake out into the Metagross and use his Z-move, which we've seen on Nihiligo, that Continental Crush. Uh, doesn't matter if it's resisted, it only needs to do uh, a few HP damage. Uh, definitely going to be able to do that, and that mechanic bleeding through the Protect, we'll see if Flavio identifies that. Um, and is able to really capitalize on uh, on that for this turn. Uh, but no protects coming out. No protect coming out from that Metal Bros, meaning that Z-Move isn't even necessary. The uh, Xerneas goes for a Moonblast into that Nihiligo there, taking it like an absolute Oof. gem. And then Nihiligo firing back with a clear smoke. Yeah, so uh, removing all the boosts, um, you know, that Z-move play, probably something that both players identified and uh, and actually Arash said uh, no, but Flavio said no a little bit louder, <laughs> uh, decided to opt for that clear smog, not even going for that Z-move. So, you know, if Arash decided to double protect, then uh, would have been uh, probably curtains for that game. Uh, but instead, uh, Flavio making the right call, uh, deciding to go for that clear smog, the fake out, uh, finishing off the Metagross from that such low HP um, and just uh, Arash deciding that Enough's enough. Top 16, that's it. Yes, he's done incredibly well, even though we saw Arash be a little bit lucky, but living on 1 HP or 2 HP, Flavio was still able to, to pressure, especially with a Nihiligo in the mm. end. It's, uh, Pokemon not really seen that much use of, but for Flavio it seemed to work incredibly well. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's... Um, you know, it's such a good Pokemon. It's such a such a interesting typing. It it it's not something that we see on many other Pokemon. Uh, poison Rock typing is is pretty rare, but it's also it's very good. It it uh, resists that Xerneas, uh, resists a lot of other attacks, the fire attacks that we see coming out a lot in in these tournaments. So you know, one of those Pokemon that's either really good or really not good in a position, and we saw it just being really good for Flavio. Yes, because of course, you know, we have a, si a team of six Pokemon, you only need to bring four, so if it's not a match for Nanaya Ligo, you just leave it at home. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So that's our top 16 game, uh, really exciting, well played to both players there. 